sometimes when you are in charge of tarbiyah, you are in charge of uh, training other people, whether you're a father, a mother, you're a teacher, you're a supervisor, then sometimes uh, it's very hard to say certain things. But if you don't say this, you don't teach people, then they are at a loss. And this happens to many parents. Like, because parents, they, they don't feel like telling children to do certain things or to correct them, especially when it's regarding the rights of parents. So for a parent to tell a child that you need to respect your parents, it's very, it's like basically saying, respect me. You're following a mother to say that. So sometimes parents, there's so many things that children should be doing, which is not haram, but they, in training the children, they feel embarrassed. Or just like a, what we say here, your nature just feels, I can't tell somebody for myself, my own personal gain. It's very hard. Teacher to tell the students, sit with respect in class, meaning you have to sit with respect in front of a teacher. A teacher who is humble or down to earth, or, he would find it very difficult to say, sit in class with respect in front of a teacher. But if you don't, then what happens? The student is at a loss. They're not learning the other, and from them not respecting the, uh, the teacher, the books, the classroom, they're going to be deprived of knowledge. They're going to be deprived of the barakah of knowledge. Do you understand? So that's why it's very important. Another thing similarly as well is, sometimes, uh, uh, teach, again, those who are in charge of tarbiya, not, they don't talk a lot. They're very quiet. And again, in there is, you protect, when you don't talk a lot, you protect yourself from a lot of sins. You get more to do tadabbur, from cont contemplation. But people are missing out. Students are missing out. Your children are missing out. And one thing I've mentioned to teachers as well, is that sometimes parents and teachers take for granted that, let's say in a class, so you're giving a lesson, and we're talking about Usaim Nizayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Now, if it's come before, that's your fault if you don't know it. If, he's, if you didn't see it before, so if you don't know it, that's your fault. You're supposed to know it, you didn't see it before. But sometimes there's a point that's not been covered before, you know it, you assume the students know this. So you carry on basing your whole daras and your whole lesson based on this one sahabi or this one point, and the students haven't even covered this, or they don't even understand this. So similarly, in, in life, life morals or life values, what happens Some the teachers, parents, they automatically assume your children will hold the same values as you, as you do. So for example, you assume that lying is bad and I know that, so hence therefore your children know that. But have you taken time out to explain to them when they may have said something like, which is not half truth, you spent a time to explain to them the harms of lying, the evils of lying. So what you possess, what knowledge you possess, what values you possess, they don't automatically transfer to your students and your children. You have to take time out and explain this to them. Are you following? You have to take time out. That's why parenting and doing tarbiyah is one of the most time-consuming jobs there is. And if you don't do this, it's time because you will have to sacrifice your own ibadah. You will have to sacrifice your own mutala. You will have to sacrifice your own personal gain for the benefits of your students, for the benefits of your children. And that's why parenting is not just about putting, uh, for those of you who are already parents or those of you who are becoming parents, that, well, that it's not just about feeding the children and clothing them. It's a very, very thing process. That's why, like, you know, you have career choices. The, best, the biggest career, biggest achievement in life is when you get all of it. That's why, like, you know, like, in our culture, in Gujarati culture, when the last kid gets married, the parents feel, Alhamdulillah, I've done my job now. They've all grown up, they all perform salah, they're all on deen, and now they're married. I've done, now if I die now, I don't worry. I'm, they've done, I've done my, that's, that's the, like, accomplishment. So, you know, in, 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 you have career choices in school, isn't it? They don't tell you, all this, oh, go to work, do this, earn money. The biggest, and this is the hardest job. You may not get financial reward, but the reward you will get in terms of contentment of heart. When you see your kids that you've, you see your kids on deen. You see that your kids value deen. The salah is intact, the sawm is intact, aqeedah is intact, they have morals, they have values. Then you say, alhamdulillah. So you have, you, have that, you have that in place. You see this, this is a contentment. And when you get older, the money will be there, but you don't have the contentment of the heart. And this will give you contentment of the heart. This is one of the biggest things. So they have, they, why they try to push careers? Because it's a consumer market. They need people to buy, they need people to work. So they don't care about, they don't care about the betterment of people. They don't care. So if, for example, a child, they don't care if the child grows up as a thief, they don't care if he grows up as an alcoholic, all they're worried about is our economy, our, our economy and our, what do you call it, the index and all that, that's all they're worried about. Islam has much more values than that. That's why the most important career is making sure that you transfer values and morals to your students and your children. Do you understand? So never ever underestimate this. And you have to take time out. So teachers have to take time out. Elders have to take time out. So if you see, for example, a teacher is always talking, or teacher is always thinking, it's not that they like doing this. 
They would rather spend their time doing something beneficial. But sometimes they have to give up the mut'ala, you have to give up the nawafil, you have to give up all these things to spend with, to transfer knowledge. This is amana. Ilm is an amana. Morals is an amana. Akhlaq is an amana. And even though it may be very, very hard to disclose these things, so, so sometimes, it, uh, sometimes to say something harsh, harsh meaning, it's for yourself it's harsh. It's against your tabiha. You want to stay humble. You don't want to do this. You don't want to tell somebody off. But you say, you, you, you need to do this. If not, they're not going to learn. Then they will be deprived. Do you understand? So as parents, as teachers, you must do this. Take out time and spend time and spend time with your children, spend time with your students and make sure that don't assume that it has something very obvious to us. That zina is impermissible. Alcohol is impermissible. Allah exists. Allah is a raziq. We have these values. But how are they going to come to our children? Because why? Children, where do you spend time? Where do you spend majority of time? In school? And after that? Internet, unfortunately. So you, you on the internet, you're watching very good things. You think you're watching a bayan, you're watching a lecture, you're watching useful podcasts, you, you do something that's useful. And you think, oh, because I've learned all of these things. My kids have already learned it. You've learned it, they haven't learned it. Are you, are you passing it on to them? Are you looking at, so if they, you, they're on the internet and they're doing other stuff, what are they watching? You don't know. So you have to make sure, take time out. This is one of the biggest jobs as a murabbi. Murabbi doesn't mean, like, mean some kind of, murabbi means whether your elder brother, whether your father, whether your mother, whether you're a teacher, whether you're teaching Alif Ba, or whether you're teaching Bukhari, this is an important duty. And this is one of the big, biggest amana, biggest responsibilities. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ashabu Sufa, he would sit with them, talk to them, explain them. The Prophet would come out, they were doing zikr, he would explain to them what's better, what is more virtuous, what is better. He would ask them questions, he passing by, he sees a dead, a dead, uh, a dead sheep, he would take a parable from this and mithal from this. He would not let any single opportunity go by where he would have a chance to explain to, explain to them and to teach them. Yes, so this ta'aleem, it's not, only, you, it's not only a job where you just read a book and that's it, it's finished. It goes much beyond this. You understand? So it is very, very important. Transferring our, our ilm, our deen, our knowledge, our morals to our thing. It's, it's a very it's a long project. And you have to take time out. You have to sacrifice your time. You understand? So when so parents, sometimes you have to sacrifice some of your own things. So well, sacrifice it. But what's more important? Our children, our next generation. And if you don't take time out to transfer it to that next generation, then they'll be void of morals, they'll be void of, because they, the, the, the mind is not going to be empty, it's, you, it's going to be filled. What do you fill it with is the most important thing. Are you going to fill it with Islamic character, Islamic teachings, Islamic morals, or is it going to be filled by external factors? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us ability to act upon this. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanahu wa bihamdi, 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 w